It's Midweek with Libby Purvis. Hello. Today we celebrate the letter-writing gift and indomitable spirit of the late Lady Diana Cooper with her son John Julius Norwich, the life and uh, once wild doings of Mary Kenny, the remarkable stage diversity of Imogen Stubbs, and we mark the 100th anniversary of The Crossword with John Halpin, who sets them. And as we're going to start with John, I want to check what everyone's attitude to crosswords is. Imogen, are you good at them? I'm unbelievably bad, and it makes me very angry. Do actors ever sit around doing them in, in the wings and getting yes, grossed? Yes, they do. Forget the clues. An obsession with most actors. Yeah, the crossword's the highlight of the day for most of them. John Julius, do you have a gift my, for them? My parents used to do the Times crossword every single morning. And I remember once coming across my father quite early in the morning, who suddenly looked terribly guilty. And I saw that he was doing the Times crossword puzzle on a piece of lavatory paper, which he'd put over the crossword so that my mother shouldn't see he'd looked at it already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sweet. That was the point that they got to. Uh, Mary Kenny, a life in newspapers. Uh, do you bother with that page? Well, crosswords are terribly important to newspapers. And um, whenever, whenever a crossword is omitted from a newspaper, it's what the readers most notice, actually. So it's very, very important. Um, I don't have a, that kind of clever mind at all. But I did, I did start doing crosswords about five years ago to stave off Alzheimer's. This is what I do. And I do the quick crossword entirely because I can't remember words and, and names. And <laughs> one of the things I've learned is that you can get better at something you're not naturally good at. And, yeah, and uh, that's very satisfying. So I, I love them. Well, let's, let's start with that topic because it's this Sunday when there will no doubt be a mass sigh and synchronised global frown and ceremonial hurling of pencils across rooms, uh, the centenary of the crossword puzzle. And John Halpin marks it with a book uh, not only about the history and the strange ways of cryptic crossword makers, but about his own life because he is a crossword setter under a number of different names for the Guardian, Financial Times, Independent, and often for the Times. Um, you, you, you're a lot of people, aren't you? They don't realise it's all you. I think I'm afraid of being myself, maybe. <laughs> um, it's a little bit of a cop-out. Um, we, we're, we're, we're cowards, crossword setters, really. Um, we have to go by false names um, so that people can't find us. And then here I am on Radio 4 being found. Um, so Will you, tell, you tell a story of a man on a train or something shouting, I hate you? <laughs> that happens quite a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I sort of invite it sometimes. Um, I, that, on that particular occasion, I sort of introduced myself and, and said who I was. And uh, yes, he, he, he. I don't know whether he needs to get off the next stop, but he did. Um, <laughs> so. Shouting, I hate you. Yes. <laughs> uh, the first thing I learned from your book is it was supposed to be called a word cross. It was invented in 1913, and he thought That's it was called a right. word cross. It that? was, and then then there was uh, yes, it was originally published in the uh, in, in the New York World, but it's actually a British invention invented by um, Arthur Wynne, who's a Liverpudlian and went to went to work in America. Um, but yes, it, it it was a word cross originally, and um, and he he was the first first guy to to make it look, if you like, a bit like a crossword, and put the little boxes in and the numbers in, and make it and make it look pretty much as we expect to see. Um, but but it was a word cross, and then and then there was a there was a typo, frankly, at some point, and then it became a crossword. And people seemed to it seemed to stick. But it didn't start off with the, with the the cryptic clues and anagrams and hidden words, which you lot do now, did it? That wasn't that no. wasn't there at the beginning, was it? No, and and it uh, and it hasn't really arrived in, in in America. It only really really started in in Britain. I don't know whether it says something about us I and mean, we're a little bit quirky, um, but that really only happened. Uh, um, from the from the thirties and uh, and the like, but but um, generally the, the the definition time clues that we we, we usually expect from a quick crossword. Well, I sent to a time to Jumbo to my daughter who lives in Taos, New Mexico, mm. every week. Mm. It's, 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 it's the only intellectual stimulus she gets. <laughs> <laughs> It's, but it needs a special kind of the, the cryptic clues need a special. I mean, I hesitate to use the word odd, but but a special kind of of mind, um, doesn't it? It's. I mean, they, they don't spring straight away out to normal people. Um, uh, gosh, I, I'm not quite sure what a normal person is. I mean, <laughs> it's I, 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 it's he's, he's he's when people tell you how they've got the clue and got the answer, it's bewildering. I, I'm completely unprepared for it. I don't understand them at all. Well, it is a little bit of a big step. Um, so, 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 so it's, it, in a way, it's like learning a language. So, um, yeah, I think, I think um, it's, it's about how we're taught as well. If I, if, if I were to put a cryptic crossword in front of you, it would be nonsense, frankly, but um, but there are various different um, tools you can but you use the, to, to learn. You say in the book how you, you had the mindset from being a small child that you were told to write a sentence with the word centimetre in it, and you said, my auntie arrived at the station, I was centimetre. Yes, that was... <laughs> that was <laughs> and you were quite small then. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes, that's 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 the sort of thing. I mean, um, I, but I think that's a British thing as well. We we, we love wordplay and we we love mocking about with words and uh, and and I, and I just look at um look at names and see things hidden and things and start playing with them. I mean, Imogen Stubbs, I'm but you know I'm, I'm, you're looking at me with horror. <laughs> like what am, what am I going to do here? But you know, have you, have um, you got an anagram Stubbs already? Not, well, I mean, I'm just thinking, how would I write a clue for Imogen Stubbs? And I, I, it starts with I'm, so you can start defining yourself, and then um, so Stubbs is an artist, um, so I'm an artist, and then and then there's O O G E N in the middle, which I think is like a melon, so that's something fruity. So we're starting to paint a fruity. <laughs> we're, we're starting to. I like we're starting. It. I know. So so <laughs> then you, then you might think uh, I I'm an artist screening something fruity. So screening suggests going You're going around something. Screen. Well, screening screening if you screen something it means covering it. Uh-huh. So you are so so either side you've got I'm Stubbs and then you screen the Ogan which is the fruity bit. So I'm an artist screening something fruity might suggest you. So that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I thought it might mean that sort yeah. of, But that's the sort of way way, way we we think. It's not exactly a job one applies for, is it? How how did no, you begin? I guess not really. Um, I I I I. I I, I began by falling in love with words and then falling in love with with crosswords because my my mum and dad used to used to do it and uh, and then uh, I just thought I just, just want to learn how to do this and and then I at one point I thought um, for me the, the 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 best two newspapers were the Guardian and the Times and they had slightly different styles and the Guardian for me was funnier but maybe not as elegant and the Times was more elegant but not as funny so I shut myself in a room for a couple of years and tried to. And tried you to create invent, a style you then submitted that was, them. Yeah. and then well, I submitted um, to the, the the guy who I thought was the the best in the world at at writing them, who's uh, who's who went by the name of Arakaria. Uh, his name's John Graham, and uh, and he he actually died a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. He's a he's a lovely friend, and um, and he invited me to for dinner, which is which he is was lovely. He's actually a judge of England priest, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, yes, yes. 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 He's w- an amazing guy. I wonder about the styles. I mean, you, you're doing them for different papers. I was mm. wondering, is, is the Guardian perhaps keener on guessing icons of the left and, and the Telegraph sort of <laughs> th- Thatcher ministers and so on? I mean, you you, you, you want to adjust like it, you know, don't you? A you bit yes, to... you do have to, to, to um, play to your audience to a certain extent. Um, yes, uh, I, I, I think, I mean, I've... I've you can actually, the, the, for instance, you can't use living people in the Times, and you can in the, in, in the Guardian. There are certain rules that you can use, and uh, you can come close to libel, I think, sometimes with with the Guardian, um, which is which is quite so funny. So you could do the image, you could do the image one in the, the, the Guardian one of these days. Uh, you you, can the image, you might well appear at some point. <laughs> is it ever possible to fill in all the clues wrong and still make sense? Has anyone ever sent you one in where they've got every single thing wrong, but it's still well? Sir so John Gill could used to do that. Uh, he? He, used to, he used to be on the train <laughs> and bless him, he'd fill it fill it, and everyone was very impressed on the train. And then one day he he, he just left the uh, the paper sitting there, and someone had a little look, and there was just a complete <laughs> nonsense they had written. Or the solver ship has changed too, hasn't it? Because um, yes. in my in the days of my youth, there were always a couple of Shakespearean quotations. Yes. And I seem to have even one or two from an ode of Horace. You know, I mean, yes. you wouldn't get that sort of thing. Now, would you get ever? You, could you do, do you still put in Shakespearean quotations sometimes? Um, the, the well, obvious, obvious the, Shakespearean the, references. It's, it's, it's interesting. Shakespearean references certainly, but yes. but you, but um, the idea is that there they, that nowadays um, we get we everything has to be written to a cryptic rule. So so if you were to put in a um, fill in the mis- missing yeah, word in the word, Shakespeare, yeah. Shakespeare quotation, that's not necessarily a cryptic clue. So right. that was considered general knowledge. Now, so mm. so while we can use Shakespearean references, it has to be sort of. Every single has to be cryptic. Yeah, yeah, it has to be cryptic. This, uh, in the book, you, you tell some curious stories about the, the wartime um, cryptic uses and the fact that, I mean, the, 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 there's an extraordinary case where some of the secret names for the D-Day landings of Utah and so on t- turned up in a crossword. Um, nobody quite knows how. Um, yes, there was. That, that's, it's, it's basically there was. I'm just trying to remember his name now. But there was a headmaster of a um, a school who who wrote the um, Daily Telegraph crossword, I think. And he um, his he would he would ask his pupils sometimes to fill in fill in the words in his in, in his in a in a grid as a, as an exercise. Oh. Um, and uh, unfortunately, these. The, these kids had been hanging around with some of the um, guys stationed at uh, with some local um, Canadian and American soldiers down the road, and they'd obviously overheard some code words like overlord and things like that, which ended up um, in, 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 the, in the puzzle. 
So although the, um, the gentleman who said it, I think his name was Leonard Dawes, used these words, uh, over, the, over the course of uh, the weeks leading up to D-Day, they, they arrived in, in the Daily Telegraph crossword. Well, and then, over, and then there was, Overlord there was, is a very doctor. Overlord is an un unusual yes. word to turn up as well, so I'm that not must sure have it was overlord, but, freaked but, out the But the names defense, of the beaches yeah. and things like that, yeah. Omaha and, and, and the like. Um, yes, so that was, that was a tricky moment. And now you meant to do sort of cryptic clues that that are linked to Strictly Come Dancing or the I X Factor. I have done so things do like do Britney that? Spears and I, I, I know. <laughs> well, Britney Spears is around the ground of, of, of Presbyterians, so it's... Have you done done twerking yet? <coughs> oh, it's on my list. It's on your list. It'll turn up. You do call, at one stage, interesting. you call crosswords a kindly uncle who will never let you down. But actually, it is true that one can get quite enraged. Mm. Uh, there was one I saw, um, some paper or other, which was one of those quick crosswords, where the clue was egg-shaped. And the answer yes. was supposed to be oval, but mm. eggs are not oval; they're ovoid, uh, and yes. it was just incorrect. <laughs> and I, yes. I fell into a terrible rage <laughs> for no good reason. We, we do sort of with. kind of trust. It's as if we, we think there has to be a kind of wisdom in crosswords. Yes, don't we? well, it's our, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to get it right, and and understandably, the solver gets upset, and uh, when you get it wrong, I mean, I um, I, I wrote a clue. I can't remember the clue, but I but I misplaced the town of Settle in, um, better get it right now, in, <laughs> in Cumbria instead of North Yorkshire. And the, there was meltdown at the Guardian switchboard. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, things, geographical things, really, it's not everyone from that area will, will call it. So. What's care. the difference between ovoid and ovoid? Is it too tight? <laughs> ovoid, an egg is narrower at one end than at the other. It's not oval. An oval is perfectly oval, oval is like the round. cricket ground, you see. Yeah, it's an it's ovoid. Oval, which is a I don't know ovoid. many things, but I happen to know that. I mean, oval by name or ought to be like an egg. So an, an oval ought to be. Big Indian and Little Indian. But it's not, it's not. And is the Oval Cricket Ground Oval? I, I don't think so. Either. Big Indian and Little Indian. Well, assume no, it. Well, you see, I thought... Oval is not a, a oval team. Is this, not is, oval. This, is, <laughs> this is the sort of conversation you imagine crossword setters yeah. having, probably at the Daily time. Telegraph. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough, enough. Let's turn to Lord Norwich. You, you may have noticed, I hope you have noticed yesterday, that the Radio 4 Book of the Week is, is Darling Monster, the letters of Lady Diana.